Howdy everyone, it's your buddy BP. We are back in Mass Effect. Last time we were here, the mission on Eden Prime didn't go so hot. We lost Jenkins, his stupid ass. We just got some Metagel. What else? We lost Nihilus, he got killed by Saren, who was responsible for the attack. And the beacon got destroyed. Not doing so well. Glad oh, hey, Caden. Okay, Commander. Commander, I'm glad to see you're okay. Losing Jenkins was hard on the crew, and I'm glad we didn't lose you, too. Aren't you, big softy? How are you Things doing? Things are pretty rough down there. Yeah, you never get used to seeing dead civilians. It doesn't seem right somehow. But at least you stopped Saren from wiping out the whole colony. Yeah, yeah, you helped. I couldn't have done it without you. We're Marines. We stick together. And I'm just sorry that we lost Jenkins. Yeah, I wish I could have done something to save him. Like, teach him I how to there. take cover. You did everything right. It was just bad luck. It's been a hell of a shakedown, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one Spectre killing another. The Citadel Council's not going to be happy about that. Probably use it to lever more concessions out of the Alliance. Yeah, you seem like you've been around. You, you talk like you know what you're talking about there, Caden. You've got a good grasp of the situation. You a career man? Yeah, a lot of biotics are. We're not restricted, but we sure don't go undocumented. May as well get a paycheck for it. Besides, my father served. I made him proud when I enlisted. Eventually. But is that why you're here? Because of your family? No, oh, I'm in Couldn't it. Couldn't keep me out if you ass. tried. Best way to explore the galaxy is behind a cannon. Zadar you got here. I heard about the Skillian Blitz. I bet you had your pick of posts after that. Word is we're heading for the Citadel, ma'am. Can you, uh, tell me why? Hmm, can't we brief him? Nah, yeah, let's not brief him. The captain's briefing was confidential. Understood, ma'am. Whatever happens, we'll be ready, Commander. Yeah, need to know there, Caden. Hey, Dr. Chakwas, how's it going? Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How did you end up serving on an Alliance ship? I enlisted right out of med school. Earth always seemed boring to me. Too safe. Too secure. I figured the colonies were teeming with exotic adventure. I wanted to travel the stars, tending the wounds of tough soldiers with piercing eyes and sensitive souls. <laughs> Turns out military life isn't quite as romantic as I'd imagined. But humanity needs the Alliance if we want to keep expanding through the Traverse. And the Alliance always needs good doctors. So I stayed on to do my part. Ever think you made the wrong choice? Sometimes I think about opening a private practice back on Earth. Or maybe taking a position at one of the new med centers out in the colonies. But there's something special about working on soldiers. If I left the Alliance now, I'd feel like I was abandoning them. Interesting. What do you know about the Captain? What do you know about Captain Anderson? I've served with him for a few tours now. He knows when to let things slide and when to crack the whip. The crew knows he's seen pretty much anything they'll ever run into. And he cares about the people under his command. Uh, are they sure about that? About seeing pretty much anything uh, they'll ever run into? Because they might run into some weird shit before this game's over. How well do you know the lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record. Over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. An L2? What does that have to do with it? Yeah. Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenko was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. Such as? What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. Damn. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. Good to know. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Yeah, he's lucky that he gets migraines. He's... Oh, hey, Ashley. What's up? I'm glad you're okay, Commander. The crew could use some good news after what happened to Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. Jenkins, Jenkins. Everyone's talking about Jenkins. Jenkins was a valuable part of this crew. Part of me feels guilty over what happened. If Jenkins was still alive, I might not be here. Well, let's see here. Yeah, you earned it. You're pretty useful. You're a good soldier, Williams. Yeah, I wish Belong I changed her uh, jaw Thanks, or cheekbones there. That means a lot from you. 
I've never met anyone who was awarded the Star of Terra. Star of Terra? There's nothing special about me, Williams. Anyone would have done the same. Held off an entire enemy platoon? Alone? With all due respect, Commander, I think you've got somebody watching over you. Things were pretty rough down there. Are you okay? I've seen friends die before. Comes with being a Marine. But to see my whole unit wiped out. And you never get used to seeing dead civilians. But things would have been a lot worse if you hadn't shown up. We couldn't have done it without you, Williams. Thanks, Commander. I have to admit, I was a little worried about being assigned to the Normandy. It's nice when someone makes you feel welcome. I think you're gonna fit in here just fine, Williams. Thanks, Commander. Alright. Williams is pretty useful. How am I looking on the Paragon stuff? Yeah, I'm a little bit more Paragon than I am Renegade at the moment, which is saying a lot since I knocked that guy off. Fuck out in the last episode. And eh, we can go down there later. We don't necessarily need to go in that direction at this moment. Alright, back to the rest of the Normandy. Ooh, galaxy map. I don't think we can really use this, so... Yeah. Can't use that. Navigator Presley. I'm glad you're okay, Commander. Losing Jenkins was hard enough on the yeah, Jenkins, Jenkins, Jenkins. No one's talking about Nihilus, though. Nav manual. Something for the Codex. I'll check that out later. I'm thinking I'll leave the uh, Codex entry stuff till, like, near the end of the video. So not to mess up with the uh, pacing. Hey, Seth Green, what's going on? Good timing, Commander. I was just about to bring us into the Citadel. See that taxpayer money at work. Well, size isn't everything. Why so touchy, Joker? I'm just saying you need firepower, too. Look at that monster! Its main gun could rip through the barriers in any ship in the Alliance fleet. Good thing it's on our side, then. Citadel Control, this is SSV Normandy, requesting permission to land. Stand by for clearance, Normandy. Clearance granted. You may begin your approach. Transferring you to an Alliance operator. Roger, Alliance Tower. Normandy, this is Alliance Tower. Please proceed to Dock 422. Alright. Seems to be going at 30 frames here. I wonder if it's because it's a cutscene kind of situation. Okay, yeah. Everything this seems to be going back to 60 frames now. The Council would step in poppin, if the Geth attacked a Turian colony? The Turians don't found colonies on the borders of the Terminus systems, Ambassador. Humanity was well aware of the risks when you went into the Traverse. What about Seren? You can't just ignore a rogue specter. I demand action! You don't get to make demands of a Council, Ambassador. Citadel Security is investigating your charges against Seren. We will discuss the CSEC findings at the hearing, not before. Captain Anderson, I see you brought half your crew with you. Just the ground team from Eden Prime, in case you had any questions. I have the mission reports. I assume they're accurate? They are. Sounds like you convinced the Council to give us an audience. They were not happy about it. Seren's their top agent. They don't like him being accused of treason. Oh, but he is guilty. He is so guilty. Saren's a threat to every human colony out there. If they don't stop him, I will. Damn right. Settle down, Commander. You've already done more than enough to jeopardize your candidacy for the Spectres. The mission on Eden Prime was a chance to prove you could get the job done. Instead, Nihilus ended up dead and the beacon was destroyed. That's Saren's fault, not hers. Yeah. 
then we better hope the CSEC investigation turns up evidence to support our accusations. Otherwise, the Council might use this as an excuse to keep you out of the Spectres. Come with me, Captain. I want to go over a few things before the hearing. Shepard, you and the others can meet us at the Citadel Tower, top level. I'll make sure you have clearance to get in. And that's why I hate politicians. <laughs> yeah, he's a real hard ass. Yeah, we'll be seeing a bit of uh, Ambassador Udina. Ooh, computer console, easy decryption. Let's give this thing a spin. Uh, what's this? Alliance Patrol report. Captain Hendrickson reported some unusual energy readings during a patrol of the Argos Row cl Cluster. Ooh, excuse me. <coughs> Mouth is a little dry. She had particular concerns about the Hydra system but was recalled before her team could investigate further. No patrols are scheduled for that sector. Do we want to send in a recon team? We'll have to take note of that. Well, here we are on the, citad uh, the Citadel. Uh, let's take a little bit of a look outside. This is the part called the uh, Presidium. It's that inner ring. And there's the other part uh, called the Wards, which is all the uh, those big five panels surrounding it. Presidium's really super pretty, don't you think? Very nice place. Looks like it would be a wonderful place to work. Very aesthetically pleasing. That was the ambassador for the humans, but we have more. I understand what you're saying, but these allegations are very serious. I can't just... This is serious. My reputation is at stake. I spoke with the consort in confidence, and her alone, and she betrayed that confidence. All right. I will look into it for you. In the meantime, do not do anything rash. Here are a few interesting people who are also ambassadors for their race. Let's talk to this guy, Zelton. Hello there, human. Sincere apology. But I am here on business and cannot be distracted right now. Yeah, what's your damage? You seem distressed. Is there something I can do to help? Alarmed response. You overheard that, did you? Yeah, I was standing this right here in front of you, bro. So wrong. And it is the Asari consort's fault. She's the one who started all this. Consort? Who's this Asari consort? Curious. You have not heard. You must be new to the Citadel. Everyone knows Shatira, the consort. I cannot speak more about this problem. It is too sensitive. Suffice it to say, she has compromised my authority as a diplomat. Well, let's see if we can track her down. Where can I find the Cesari consort? She is across the bridge from here. Her offices are easy enough to spot. Take a, Good day, human. Take a moment to admire the new textures. You see all these sort of, uh, this animated light band that kind of moves up from the back of, uh, this fella's outfit to the front. That wasn't in one of the original textures. That's, I believe this is, uh, new. Very sharp looking. But this is this guy's ambassador, uh, Kaylin, I believe, I think that says. Let's go ahead and speak to this person. Pleased greeting. Human, it is always good to see your kind. I am Ambassador Kalen. Genuine query. Is there something I can do for you this day? Yeah, what's up with, uh, your funny way of talking there, Kalen? Why do you explain what you're about to say? Our people communicate less through words and more through scent and slight movements. Plainly, we discovered our vocal expression was not enough to convey the feelings of our conversations to other species. Why do you bother, Kalen? These Earth Clan don't really care about our ways. Dick. Remorseful response, Din. You don't truly believe that. And if you do, I am very sorry for you. Let's uh, learn a little bit more about the Elcor here. Tell me more about your species. Genuine enthusiasm. I delight in telling the history of my people. It is agreeable to share our culture with others. Tell me about the history and origins of the Elcor. 
The Elcor were just beginning to explore Council space when the Asari first made contact with us. With their help, we discovered the relay closest to our system, and from there the Citadel. Proudly. Within one lifetime we established a regular route to the Citadel, and quickly became one of the more active species living on this great station. I'd like to know more about the culture of the Elcor. Frankly, we Elcor prefer the safety and familiarity of our own colonies to the confines of space travel. Our society is built on small, tight-knit groups, though we are always welcoming to outsiders. Our government tends to be very stable. Our people are not very comfortable with sudden changes. Interesting. What's, uh, what's your job here, anyway? What do you do here? Modestly. I work to bring the problems and the requests of the Elcor groups to the attention of the Council. Ha! They only give us these positions to keep us quiet. The Council doesn't care about our races. Chastising rebuke. Your tone is inappropriate, Dan. This human is not to blame for your malcontent or your misconceived suspicions. Damn right. Goodbye, Ambassador. Sincere farewell. Good day to you, human. Those are... Enjoy your time on the Citadel. Yeah, and those are the Elcor. We don't see many of them outside of uh, the Citadel, but we will encounter a few. And this guy, Din Korlock, he is a Volus, and we will be seeing a few of them. Earth Clan, you are in the wrong place, I think. Your ambassador is next door in the large office. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Dan. At least introduce yourself. <sighs> I am Din Korlak, Volus Ambassador. Is there something I can do for you, Earth Clan? You cannot be a dick. You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, Din. You humans are new to the Citadel, and yet the Council has granted you great favor. <sighs> Chastising rebuke, Din. Your species has always been granted many concessions. Volus territory has expanded tenfold since coming to the Citadel. <laughs> Details. We still have no real say in the decisions that affect Citadel space. What is this place? You are in the embassy for the Volus and the Elcor. Your ambassador is next door, in his own office. In this shared space, I aid my fellow Volus, when I'm not being interrupted. Too bad. Let's talk more about the Volus. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history and culture would bore you, Earth Clan. Are you deaf? I said Actually, tell I me like about, you know about your it. history and culture, you jerk. My people came to the Citadel shortly after the Asari and Salarians had discovered it. We were instrumental in establishing a standardized galactic economy. However, despite our long association with the Citadel and our many contributions to galactic society, we still do not hold a seat on the Council. Tell me about Volus culture. We are tribal by nature, but our ways are not violent. We barter and trade our lands and tribe members in order to increase status. Larger tribes often engulf smaller ones and eventually split again. Our society is very malleable, and our government is always shifting and changing. Since we're not physically adept, we trade our services for protection. Which is why they wear those funny-looking suits. What is it you do here? I look out for the best interests of the Volus people. No easy task considering how often we are overlooked by the Council. Chastising rebuke, Dan. The Council favors your species greatly. You are naive. The Earth Clan will be invited to the Council long before our species will. Why aren't the Elcor or Volus part of the Council? All species must prove themselves before they join the Council. All but the Earth Clans, it would seem. Oh, what a douche. 
dismissive. Ignore the Volus Ambassador, human. He is incorrect in his assessment. Really? How long have we been waiting? How long do you think we'll continue to wait? Bah! This talk is wasted on the humans. Let's get away from this asshole. Goodbye, Ambassador. Yes, yes. Good day, Earth Clan. And this freaky looking fellow over here is called a Keeper. These things are all over the Citadel, just doing all kind of maintenance work. No one ever bothers them, and nobody asks questions about who they are or where they came from. We'll, we will be hearing more about them later on. Let's go ahead and leave these ambassador offices. And explore the Citadel a little bit more on our own. Here we are. Very neat. Hello. Greetings and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. What does that mean? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence, programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. Interesting. Goodbye. There's a Goodbye, lot more information that she Avena. offers, but... Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. I'm not going to bore you too much with all of the details, but I do want to explore some more. Check things out a bit. Hmm. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. Got some codex entries. Got another codex entry. Very nice. Another one of those keepers. Keepers. We're going to be seeing a few of those. Human, delighted, welcome. It is good to meet you. Elcor are always so nice. Hello. Oh wait, never mind. This is that. This is the one. This is the CSEC offices. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? No, I go where, wherever the hell I want. Nobody sends me anywhere. I just need some information. You humans are always so curious, always sticking your fingers into someone else's pie. Is that the right expression? No. No, it is uh, not. Never mind. Forget I asked. It is not. Was there not. something you needed, Commander? Yeah, what's up with, uh, with you? I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. Man, everyone's treating you us like shit. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. The Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet. That's their business. But I don't have to like it. The Council treats us like second-class citizens. We have to fight for everything we get. Good. Then fight for it. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take it. I'm a busy man, Commander. Are we done here? Now, let's talk about his investigation. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. Well, damn. What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Council, or so they like to be called. More like the underhand inside of the Council. Hmm. What do you have against the Spectres? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Especially when it's left up to each individual Spectre to decide when and how to bend the rules. Sometimes you have to bend the law to keep people safe. I've been with CSEC for 30 years. I've never had to break the law to do my job, not once. Yeah, right. You expect us to believe none of your officers are corrupt? There are over 200,000 CSEC agents. Some of them are going to be bad. But we don't turn a blind eye to corruption like the Spectres do. We do our best to find and punish any officer who breaks the law. Spectres? <laughs> They'll never come under that kind of scrutiny. The galaxy needs people like that. People who do the dirty jobs. I agree. 
But they need to be held to a higher standard. They need to be accountable. Saren's out of control. We both know that. But because he's a Spectre, the Council doesn't want to do anything about it. Is that the kind of person this galaxy needs? Interesting question. Hmm. But not all Spectres are like Saren. True. But the potential is always there. Yes, it is. I'll be going now. Yeah, it's Goodbye, a shame. Commander. Seems like we would be on the same side, but... It's kind of a dick towards humans. Another computer console we can uh, decrypt. Let's try that. E. Diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted. My fellow Biotic, you have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. If you, under, if you understand us, if you will tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come, join us in the Hawking Eda Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. We will be visiting those folks soon enough. Let's go ahead and get out of here. I think there's another area around here. Don't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal her secrets. Of course she would. She'd be talked at the nearest airlock if she did. Uh, I suppose. Besides, Nick, the consort's nothing like the girls back on the colonies. <laughs> she's... she's... You don't have to do it with her. You can just talk to her if you want. Is that all you did, Jazz? Just talk? I didn't say that. Ha! I bet you did too. What do you want? Oh, Commander. That's right. Better get your is shit together. Is there something I can do for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right. Sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? What can you tell me about the Asari consort? I, uh... Well, she's an Asari who works here as... That is, she helps people with... things. You never want to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh, no, I never did. Uh, I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. Damn. Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. Huh. Mm hmm. Bartender. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? Sure, why not? What have you got? Information, mostly. Would you like to know about some points of interest nearby? Sure. What's going on around here? Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. Interesting. Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's Den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier, all at the same time. Yeah, we'll be visiting Goodbye. those places soon enough. So long, Commander. There's another a pleasant keeper day. that way. Well, we have to keep track of where these keepers are, by the way. There will uh, come a moment where uh, we will need to remember. Until the meantime, let us continue. I'll just like exploring the uh, citadel here. Very uh, interesting uh, locale. Oh, excuse me. Alright. We could take this thing for a fast transit, but let's go ahead and uh, walk around a little more. Let's really uh, soak everything in. I really uh, admire the aesthetics of this place. Definitely looks cool with all the uh, new textures. That's for sure. Definitely looks great at uh, 60 frames. When I first played Mass Effect, it was on console, and of course it was uh, locked at a 30 frame, uh, 30 frames per second. So doesn't didn't look quite as nice as this. And there's another keeper. Very interesting. And here's another one right here. In fact, we can, uh... Yeah, really. 
Please do not disturb the keepers. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. To your left is one of the keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel. We ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. The keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Let's learn more about these keepers. I'd like to know more about the Keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel, though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the Keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the Tower. Why? Any particular reason there are so many Keepers in this area? The Keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station's systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. Very interesting. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. Alright, here's the uh, elevator to the Citadel Tower. Get used to seeing these elevators. There are a lot of them in the Citadel. But this will take us where we need to go to speak to the Council. And of course, they have literal elevator music. The Council isn't going to ask me any questions, are they? I doubt it. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Udina. No, we don't, sir. <laughs> Alright. Getting a little further up. I might have to... I think there might be a mod out there to make these elevator rides go a little bit faster. I might have to consider uh, looking into that. Because some of these uh, elevator rides can be brutal. Open sesame. There we go. Here's where the council chambers are. Very nice place. Very cool looking. Hello. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council. Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Go on. Come across anything I should know about? Saren's a specter. Most of his activities are classified. I couldn't find anything solid. But I know he's up to something. Like you humans say, I feel it in my gut. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Well, good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. Maybe. I'm not gonna hold my breath. <laughs> Very cool looking chamber. Hmm. Don't be ridiculous. The bolus won't be joining the council for years. I'm not so sure. The humans are making a strong push, and you can bet the bolus will be right on their coattails if they succeed. Allowing the humans to join us is a sound strategic move. But the bolus? No. The Hanna are likely to be next, then the Elcor. You may be right. Though the Hanna need to lighten up a bit first. You just don't like them because you have trouble understanding them. Burn! In your face. There's the rapid transit. There's another keeper. All sorts of stuff around here, but... Let's go... There we are. Captain Anderson, what's the going on? already started. Come on. Kind of weird how the, the stairs uh, look in this game. Concern, it's really just kind of like a ramp. Saren was involved in just any the way. textures are there the to investigation make it kind of look by like Citadel stairs. Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. 
An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre, and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. That was you, dick. You're the one who destroyed the beacon. Then you tried to cover it up. Shift the blame to cover your own failures. Just like Captain Anderson. He's taught you well. But what can you expect from a human? You can expect me to kick you in the dick next time I find you. You can expect me to kill you the next time we meet. Oh, okay. Your species I like how I needs said to it learn better. its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that. That's not his decision. Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. Well, that didn't go well. This meeting is adjourned. It was a mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Yeah, how do you know Saren? Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here, but I know what he's like, and he has to be stopped. All right, what's next? What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Hmm, could be useful. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. Mm. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. All right, now let's get on to this business about you and Saren. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way. Innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience. No hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. 
Wow, what a dick. Killing innocents doesn't end wars. It causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. Hmm. Interesting. Let's talk a little bit more. Our ambassador doesn't about, seem uh, to get along with the council. Here. He's just frustrated. The council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the council. The ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. Hmm. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. Oh wait, hold on. I, I didn't Saren mean to do that. It, but <laughs> I saw how he operates. I didn't no mean conscience. to do that. No, uh, I kind of slipped there. Let's talk a bit about He'd Harkin. He'd a thousand innocent You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. Yeah, why bother? Guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. Mm-hmm. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation. But sometimes more extreme measures are needed. I should go. Good Oop, luck, sir. I didn't mean to do that. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. Oh, well. I'll chat with Anderson a little bit later. And I think we got some new Codex entries here. Let's uh, learn about some of these non-Council races. The Elcor are a citadel species native to the high-gravity world Dakuna. They are massive creatures, standing on four muscular legs for increased stability. Elcor moves slowly, an evolved response to an environment where a fall can be lethal. This has colored their psychology, making them deliberate and conservative. Elcor's speech is ponderous and monotone. Among themselves, scent, slight movements, and sub-vocalized infrasound convey shades of meaning that make a human smile seem as subtle as a fireworks display. Since their subtlety can lead to misunderstandings with other species, the Elcor often go out of their way to clarify when they are being sarcastic, amused, or angry. Dakuna's high gravity impedes mountain formation. Most of the world consists of flat, open plains, which prehistoric Elcor wandered across in small family bands. Modern Elcor still prefer open sky, and can become restless and uncomfortable on long starship journeys. Which probably explains why we don't see many of them. What about the Keepers? When the Asari discovered the Citadel, they also discovered the Keepers. A docile, multi-limbed insect race that seemingly exists only to maintain and repair the Great Prothean Station. Early attempts to communicate with or study the Keepers were failures. And it is now illegal to interfere with or impede Keeper activity. Because they are completely non-threatening, Keepers have become virtually invisible to everyone else. Similarly, they seem indifferent to other species, except for their tendency to help new arrivals integrate themselves into the Citadel. No matter how many Keepers die due to old age, violence, or accident, they maintain a constant number. No one has discovered the source of new Keepers, but some hypothesize they are genetic constructs. Biological androids created somewhere deep in the inaccessible core of the Citadel itself. So yeah, apparently these damn critters are all over the place. No one knows where they came from. No one knows how they keep repopulating. But they are here, and they've always been here. And they just keep the whole place running. Not sure why uh, there aren't more inquiries about it, but... Mm, that's the thing. 
Keepers are a big mystery here in the uh, Citadel. The Volus are a member species of the Citadel with their own embassy, but they are also a client race of the Turians. Centuries ago, they were voluntarily absorbed into the hierarchy, effectively trading their mercantile prowess for Turian military protection. Erun, their homeworld, lies far beyond the normal life zone of its star. However, the world has a high-pressure greenhouse atmosphere that traps enough heat to support an ammonia-based biochemistry. As a result, the Volus must wear pressure suits and breathers when dealing with other species, as conventional nitrogen-oxygen air mixtures are poisonous to them, and in the low-pressure atmospheres tolerable to most species, their flesh will actually split open. Yikes. Volus culture is tribal, bartering lands and even people to gain status. This culture of exchange inclines them to economic pursuits. It was the Volus who authored the Unified Banking Act, and they continue to monitor and balance the Citadel economy. Interesting. It seems like these Volus are actually really important to, uh, to the culture of uh, the Mass Effect universe. It seems like the only reason they're not a part of the Council is because of uh, this issue with them uh, having to rely on the Turians for defense. If they could slay that dragon and uh, establish an actual effective military force, I think they could uh, easily make it onto the council. I think it's just this one thing that holds them back. Speaking of the council races, we have a few new the entries. The Asari were the first species to discover the Citadel. When the Salarians arrived, it was the Asari who proposed the establishment of the Citadel Council to maintain peace throughout the galaxy. Since then, the Asari have served as the mediators and centrists of the council. An all-female race, the Asari reproduce through a form of parthenogenesis. They can attune their nervous system to that of another individual of any gender and of any species to reproduce. This capability has led to the unseemly and inaccurate rumors about Asari promiscuity. Asari can live for over a thousand years, passing through three stages of life. In the maiden stage, they wander restlessly, seeking new knowledge and experience. When the matron stage begins, they meld with interesting partners to produce their offspring. This ends when they reach the matriarch stage, where they assume the roles of leaders and counselors. Very interesting. We will be seeing a lot of Asari in Mass Effect. They are very prominent, and they're often very good at biotics as well for some reason. So, yeah, and that's who that... uh. That woman was we saw on the uh, spaceship with Saren earlier. She is an Asari. But uh, let's go ahead and look at the Salarians, because we'll be seeing some of them too. The second species to join the Citadel, the Salarians are warm-blooded amphibians with a hyperactive metabolism. Salarians think fast, talk fast, and move fast. To Salarians, other species seem sluggish and dull-witted. Unfortunately, their metabolic speed leaves them with a relatively short lifespan. Salarians over the age of 40 are a rarity. The Salarians were responsible for advancing the development of the primitive Krogan species to use as soldiers during the Rachni Wars. They were also behind the creation of the genophage bioweapon the Turians used to quell the Krogan rebellion several centuries later. Salarians are known for their observational capability and non-linear thinking. This manifests as an aptitude for research and espionage. They are constantly experimenting and inventing, and it is generally accepted that they always know more than they are letting on. Yeah, the uh, Genophage, as a result of the uh, Krogan Rebellion, is one of the more controversial uh, subjects of the Mass Effect universe. We will definitely be hearing about that. What's all the this? The Citadel... The Council is an executive committee oh, composed of representatives from the, the Asari Council Republics, here. the Turian Hierarchy, and the Salarian Union. Though they have no official power over the independent governments of other species, the Council's decisions carry great weight throughout the galaxy. No single Council race is strong enough to defy the other two, and all have a vested interest in compromise and cooperation. Each of the Council species has general characteristics associated with the various aspects of governing the galaxy. The Asari are typically seen as diplomats and mediators. The Salarians gather intelligence and information. 
The Turians provide the bulk of the military and peacekeeping forces. Any species granted an embassy on the Citadel is considered an associate member, bound by the accords of the Citadel conventions. Associate members may bring issues to the attention of the Council, though they have no input on the decision. The Human Systems Alliance became an associate member of the Citadel in 2165. Neato. And we're trying to see if maybe one day we will wind up on the Council. I don't know if there's much else uh, here. Biotics is the ability of rare well, individuals yeah, to manipulate dark energy and create mass effect fields through the use of electrical impulses from the brain. Intense training and surgically implanted amplifiers are necessary for a biotic to produce mass effect fields powerful enough for practical use. The relative strength of biotic abilities varies greatly among species and with each individual. There are three branches of biotics. Telekinesis uses mass lowering fields to levitate or impel objects. Mass raising kinetic fields are used to block or pin objects. Spatial distortion uses rapidly shifting mass fields to shred objects. Most organic species are capable of developing biotic abilities, though there are risks involved. Biotics are the result of an in utero exposure to element zero. This usually causes fatal cancers in the victim, but in rare cases, it coalesces into nodules within the fetus's developing nervous system. Interesting. So occasionally you'll see people uh, shooting this bluish, purplish stuff and manipulating things in the uh, in the game. Those folks are called biotics. A virtual Our buddy uh, is Caden the... is one of those too. Combat hearts. And this is just explaining kinetic uh, barriers. other game elements here. So yeah, I just wanted to save that for the end. And uh, that does bring us to the end of this video. I look forward to uh, seeing if we can scrounge up some evidence to prove Saren's guilt. We will be doing that very soon. Until then, if you enjoyed this video, then spank that like button. Also, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section if you have any feedback for me. I love hearing back from you, and I try to respond to as many people as I can. And as always, y'all be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.